Well, good afternoon. Well, good evening. Praise God. God bless you this evening. God keep you this evening. And thank you for tuning on me once again. Praise God. Oh, what a cold weather. Cold weather. Snowy weather. Anyway, I just want to um talk to you about uh the first Thessalonians. It talks about the faith of the Thessalonian believers. The faith of the Thessalonian believers. First Thessalonians um, started with verse Mm, chapter 1 verse 2 it says we always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly as we pray to our God and Father about you we think of your faithful work your love and deed and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ and that's also the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 8 it says we know dear brothers and sisters that God love you and has chosen you to be in his own people for when we bought you the good news it was not only with words but also with power for the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that's that it says that it said that's what we said was true and to know of our concern for you from the way we live when we were with you so you receive the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the servant's suffering it brought you. In this way, you emulate both us and the Lord. As a result, you have become an example to all the believers in Greece throughout both Nicodemia and Achelia. It says in verse 8, it says, And now... And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to peoples everywhere, even beyond Methodinus. For every, it says, it says, for wherever we go, we find peoples telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about it, for they keep talking about the wonderful welcome you gave us and how to return, it says, how to turn away from idols who serve the living and true God. And they speak of how we are looking towards to the coming of God's Son from heaven. Jesus whom gave you know, Jesus whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. And that's also in the book of uh, Acts chapter two, verse twenty four. And verse uh so, well, chapter 2, it also talks about, you know, Paul remembers his visit, you know, visit, you know, Paul remember his visit, you know, like some of you may remember your visit, you know, going to the altar, you know, repenting, going to the Lord and everything, going in front of, you know, inside the building of the house of the Lord, going away in the front, repenting. Sometimes you remember your visit. Sometimes you remember your visit when the first time you visit a church that you had uh, probably became a member to. You probably, you probably visited more than one time before you had, you know, decided to be a member to the church. You know, some of you all. But uh, chapter 2, it says, you yourself know, dear brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not a failure. You know how badly we had been treated at Philippian just before we came to you and how much we suffered there. Yet our God gave us the courage to declare his good news to his good news. He declared his good news. Gave us the courage to declare his good news to you boldly in spite of great opposition. So you can see we were not preaching with any deceit or impure motive or trickery. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not peoples. That's why I said before I'm not a people pleaser. I have to please God. I'm not here to please people. That's what the book says. Our purpose is to please God. You're not even supposed to please people anyway. You know, I know people hurt you, people let you down. You're not supposed to please them anyway. You're supposed to please God. You know, about loving others and doing what's right. Doing what God said, do keeping this commandment. He didn't say please people. He said, supposed to be pleasing him. Keep his commandment. Do what he tells you to do. You know, it says not, you know, purpose is not to please God, not people. He alone examined the motive of our hearts. Never once did, he, did we try to win. You would flatter me, as you well know, 
And God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friend just to get your money. As for some human praises, we have uh, never sought it from you or anyone else. That's also in the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. In verse 7 here says, As apostles of Christ, we certainly had a right to make some demands of you. But instead, we were like children among you, or we were like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. We love you so much that we share with you not only good, or not only God's good news, but our own lives too. Don't you remember, dear brothers and sisters, how hard we work among you night and day? We told we told to earn a living so that we would not be a burden to any of you. As we preach God's good news to you, you yourself are our, are our witnesses, and so is God, that we were devoted and honest and faultless towards all of you believers. And now you know that we treated each of you as a father treated his own children. We pleaded with you, encouraged you, and urged you to live your lives in a way that God will consider worthy for he called you to share in his kingdom and glory. You didn't do it. He called you to do it. And that's also in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 15. And verse 13 here says, Therefore we never stop thanking God that when you receive his message from us, you didn't think of our words. As mere human ideas, you uh, uh, it said you accepted what we said as a very word of God, which of course it is, and this word continued to work in you who believe. And then, dear brothers and sisters, you suffered persecution from your own countrymen in this way. You uh, emanated the believers in God's churches and uh, Judea who became of their beliefs in Christ Jesus, suffered from their own people, the Jews. For some of the Jews killed the prophet, and some even killed the Lord Jesus. Now they have persecuted us too. They fail to please God and work against all humanity as they try to keep us from preaching the good news of salvation to the Gentile. By doing this, they continue to pile up their sin, but the anger of good uh, the angel of God, the anger of God has caught up with them at last. And that's also in the book of uh Matthew chapter twenty three verse uh thirty two. And verse seventeen here it talks about Timothy's good report about the church. Verse seventeen it says, Dear brothers and sisters, after we were separated from you a little while through our heart never left you. We tried very hard to come back because of our intense longing to see you again. We want very much to come to you, and I, Paul, tried again and again, but Satan prevented us. After all, what gives us hope and joy and what will be our proud, you know, our proud reward and crown as we stand before our Lord Jesus when he returns. It is you. Yes, you are our pride and joy. Praise God. And that's also, um, well, I want to also share with you, uh, talking about the growing. You know, people, some people grow uh, the fear of growing old. I'm going to read about uh, fear of, of growing old. Fear of growing old. Some people get old. Fear like I'm getting old, I'm getting old, I'm getting worry and everything, fearing and everything, getting scared and all this kind of stuff, crazy stuff going in their mind, and guys who don't fear don't worry anyway. You know, but it talks about, you know, surviving fear, you know, some people you know, surviving fear of growing old. Praise God. And that's all sort of I had read this uh matter of fact back in um I believe May I think it's May seventeenth this year I had read about you know, there's the fear of growing old. But Job chapter 11, verse 16 to 17 said, Because thou shalt forget thy misery, and remember it as water that pass away, and thine age shall be clearer than the noonday. Thou shalt shine forth 
thou shall be as the morning. Praise God, thou shall be as the morning. Praise God. Remind me of a morning star. Be as a morning star. Praise God. Uh, Job chapter 12, verse 12 says, With the anxious is wisdom, and the length of days understanding. Psalms 23, verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And sometimes when people read that, it's like, well, Are you really going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever? Or are you going to get mad and leave the church? You're going to let the church leave out of you. Because there ain't much nothing but a building the church supposed to be in you. Are you going to give up on God and leave Him? You know, he, or he going to really be, you know, dwelling in your house forever. Pray God. You know, that's why we like, when people be rereading, I mean, do they say, is they, taking, is they really taking heed of it? Do they really believe in what they're saying? Are they really doing what they read? Are they really, or just read, just to be reading? You know, are they taking heed of it? Are they being serious about it? Or they just taking it as a joke, like, well, you know, I'm just reading, you know, well, whatever happened, happened. Are you really taking this uh, as a joke, or are you really taking it seriously? I mean, cause I know God is not nothing to play with. I mean, this world is just not here just for you just read and like it's some kind of storybook was like, well, it ain't really just ain't about a story, you know, just read and all, you know, that's and still do your sinful thing, you know, are you really taking heed of it and believing it, you know, and living it, you know, praise God as well as you reading it. Are you taking heed for your own life? Are you doing it for your own life or the same way you just reading just to, just to be reading and really not doing the will of God for your own life? That's why I be like wondering sometimes like people can read quote the scripture real good remember real good and everything and you know uh, preach and teach real good but it's like are you really living are you really doing the will of God for your life are you really doing what it say do and what not to do um psalm 31 verse 13 it says oh spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more Psalm 41 verse 2 says, The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver, deliver him unto the will of his enemies. And um, Psalms uh, 71 verse 9, verse 17 and verse 18 says, Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength failed. O oh God, Thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared Thy wondrous work. Now and also when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not, until I have shewed Thy strength unto this generation, and Thy power to every one that is to come. In Psalm 90 verse 12, it says, So teach us to remember our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In Psalm 92 verse 14 says, They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Proverbs chapter uh, 3 verse 2 says, For length of days and long life and peace shall thy add to the add to the add to the add to the whatever. Add it. Praise God. Uh, Proverbs chapter 20 verse 29 says, it says, the glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 to 31 says, He giveth power to faint, and to them that have no might. He increased strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. With wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with thee, but not dismayed, for I am thy Lord. For me, say, for, it says, For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. Yea, me, yes. I will help you, yes. He says, I will string you, I will string ye, yes, yea, yes, I will help thee, yea, yes, I will, with a saying, yes, I will help the whatever, yes, I will help, whatever situation going through, I will help, you know, the light get cut back on, praise God, yes, I will, whatever, bills, whatever situation, I will help the whatever, 
Yes, I will. Well, yay, me. The me, yes, I will help the ye. Me, yes, yes, I will do it. Yes, I will help you, whatever situation. Yes, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my right of my righteousness. I will hold up thee. I will hold up the whatever with the right hand of my righteous. The right hand right here. I hold up my right hand. I will hold I said I will hold he said, I will hold up thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I will hold up thee. I will hold up the whatever. I will hold up the whatever. Hallelujah. And that's all that's in Isaiah chapter forty one verse ten. Isaiah chapter forty six verse four. It says, And even to your old age I am he. And even to horror or hair will I carry you. I have made and I will bear uh I will bear even, I will carry, and you will. He says, and I will. It says, and will. Let me read that one more time. I have made, and I will bear even, I will carry, and will deliver you. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Will I always say you can do all things through Christ to strengthen you? It says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Praise God. In 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 10 it says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. That's why I be like telling people, when you ever, whatever you speak, you're speaking negative, you're speaking evil, you know, you're going to get the results of evil. You're going to get the results of bad things. It said, reframe your tongue from it. Reframe your tongue for speaking evil. Reframe your tongue from talking negative. Reframe your tongue for, for speaking all the bad, ignorant stuff that comes out your mouth. Reframe it. Reverse that. Put the goodness in. Put the goodness in this. Put in that I love you. You know, you blessed. I mean, you know, put something that's positive now. We're going to make it. We're going to make it on through by faith, by Christ Jesus. Put something positive in there. When you put all that negative, refrain your tongue from all the evil. You know, all the evil that whatever comes through your thought, your mind, whatever's in your heart is going to come out. Whatever's in going to come out of man. You know, whatever you're speaking, was it was in a heart, you're going to speak and then say it. You're speaking negative things, you're going to get negative results. You're speaking positive things, you're going to get positive results. Praise God. And it says in his lip that they speak no guilt. Praise God. Let me read that one more time. It says, For that, it says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. If you see all these good life, you love life, and you see all these good days ahead of you, why are you gonna speak something negative and a mixture of the good days and a good life? You know you got good days or having good life up above, you know, then all of a sudden you one day you you feel it good, you be saying positive thing, and that thing you know when the thing get all discouraged or off guard or get you all off course, you're speaking all that negative. Oh, this ain't gonna work. Oh, this ain't gonna never happen. We ain't one thing gets another. You're speaking all them negative things, you're gonna continue to get negative results. Praise God. So it's like reframe all that evil stuff. Reframe all that stuff and you don't know, get that out of your tongue, get that out of your spirit, and speak the good spirit of God. Hallelujah. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lip that they speak no girls. And that's also uh, what I said in First Peter chapter three verse uh, ten. Praise God and God bless you and God keep you today as always. That's why I be like telling um even my own kids, my own daughter, you, you speak negative, you get negative results. You know, and I'm, like, I'm just playing. I'm just didn't know. It's not no you you may be playing, but still you spoke or you said it. You're gonna get them negative results. The negative you know, the negative thoughts that came out of your mouth, out your tongue, within your heart, what's in you what's in a man or woman it'll come out a man or woman, whatever. Whatever your thought, whatever you're thinking, it's gonna come out. Whatever negative you say, you're gonna get negative results. Whatever goodness did you say was in a good man, was in what's in a good woman, it's gonna come out good. Praise God, you're gonna see it, it's gonna show. Hallelujah. Same with evil. Either way. Evil. Speaking evil. You're going to get an evil result. A negative result. Goodness. Good life. You're going to get good life and, and good results. Praise God. Um, and, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm just playing. No, you said it. 
you know, you said it, you know, that's the, that's the results you're going to get. Saying you don't trust nobody, even like, I'm just going to see you, you're going to say, no, nah, I mean, I'm just playing, you know, I trust you. No, you spoke them first, the first words, but what I go by, you spoke, you know, you don't trust me, or you this and that, or you know, you know I mean, that's, that's, the, that's, that's your heart, that's what your heart speaking, you got the negative tongue, and that's what your reaction, that's what you think, and that's what you said. So I speak in evil, speaking negative. You get a negative result. You don't probably get a negative response for speaking a negative result from your tongue. But anyway, God bless you. <laughs> and God keep you. I'm praying for each and every last one of you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning on to me once again, as always. Praise God. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I'm just, you know, people can be like, <clears throat> well, speaking of the weather, people just it's buying, it's buying, it's buying us. People just, <laughs> It's so funny. I was in the store and um <clears throat> a few stores. I was I went I went to about three or four different stores just just getting stuff shopping, getting this, getting that. Anyway, that one store didn't have a go to another store. I, I mean I was just going to store at the store at the store. And um it's like I was just thinking, I'm like, what if it don't even snow? Just what if it don't even snow? I'm talking about five, they talking about five o'clock in the morning before they really, really pour down. And I'm like, well, what if it don't even happen at five o'clock? What if it happened later? I mean, it's good to be prepared and then to be sorry. I mean, people just buying up the bread. Where I went, like, where, where the bread at? You know, I'm like, I don't know. You know, I mean, Walmart may got some bread. I don't know. And, well, I have to go to Walmart. These other places don't have no bread. Ran out of bread. I'm not too much of a bread eater anywhere. I get bread, but I'm not too much of a bread bread eater. But it's good to be prepared. You know, just in case they like go out and everything. They eat bread, bologna sandwich. I mean, well peanut butter, jelly, whatever. But um I was just thinking, I'm like, where they compare it, comparing all the stuff it didn't even snow when they said it was gonna snow it snow later on, praise God. But I'm glad I was I was in the house when it really, really got the pouring down. I just thank God, you know, that's why I was just like pray Lord, keep me safe, you know, protect me and mine. You know, that's why I was have to pray and, and, and say this thing before everything happened, before these bad storms happen, praise God. I mean, it's snowing. I'm, I'm taking. I'm, I'm probably take some pictures. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe take some pictures and show y'all how I look out here in Arkansas, snowing Arkansas. But anyway, God bless you. Pray each and every last one of you. Heavenly Father, pray for those watching. God bless you and God keep you. Pray Lord to be with you and keep you and protect you in every area of your life. I don't know whatever you going through. I don't know where you live. I don't know what state you in. I just pray Lord to protect you and and um. Bless you and and uh, in every area of uh, whatever storm, whatever you're going through, whatever you know disaster. I pray, Lord, to keep you safe in Jesus' name. I pray you will make it. He will protect you in Jesus' name. I pray you keep your faith and trust in Him. Don't stop. Don't give up on Him. Stay in the Word. Do the will of God. Feel like keep loving in Jesus' name. And stay in prayer and stay in good faith in you. Good courage in Jesus' name. And I pray no weapon form against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you in Jesus' name. God bless you as well as every day. God bless you and your family. And I pray for every sickness and every disease right now. Somebody may not be feeling good. Somebody may be sick. Somebody may not, you know, uh, can't make it or can't get up or something or can't move. I pray, Lord, just give them strength right now. Right where they are, right where they hurt. Release that pain and heal them right where they are in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you to speak to you a healer, not a killer, in Jesus' name. Remove that bad headache, remove that back pain, remove whatever pain they're going through right now, Lord. I pray you release it in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Lord, I believe it. I want to say thank you, Jesus, for healing them. Thank you, Jesus, for the healing. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord, for the protector. Thank you, Lord, for the guarding the angels around your peoples and protecting them in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. God bless them in Jesus' name. And God keep them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. In spite of whatever disaster, whatever snow, wherever you are, I don't know if it's snow hitting wherever you are, but I know it hit over here where I am, praise God, out here in Arkansas. It hit over here. Hallelujah. I'll probably do some pictures tomorrow, guys, for the same, probably when I get off work or before I go to work or something. Anyway, I just thank God for protecting me and blessing me and keeping me safe, you know, with these lights continually to be on. Praise God. Because I know I live for the light. In the light, not no darkness, not happening, not this way. Hallelujah, glory be to God. But God bless you, God keep you. Remember, God love you, and so do I have a wonderful day. And don't let the devil hell steal your today or no day. In spite of whatever's going through, cold, uh, storm, or snow, rain, whatever's going on in your area, I just pray you just be safe. 
you know, get out if you have to get out, you know, don't get out just to be getting out, you know. I mean, I don't mean think crazy, don't mean do stupid stuff because God is with you, know, I mean do other stuff but that's not even necessary, you know, still, you know, have a, keep your common sense, you know, stay, stay safe and be safe, you and your family, God bless you and God keep you, in Jesus' name. See you next time, if God say the same. God love you, and so do I, as always, remember that, you know, from the heart, and I do mean what I say, praise God, I ain't just saying it, well, you know I mean, if I see you or not, God see you, and you can see me on YouTube, but I'm keeping it real, I gotta keep it real, cause God first loved me, and I gotta love you in spite of what if I know you don't know, you don't matter what you look like, don't matter what color you are, God say love, love is love, love don't come in no color, and I love you all, and God bless you, and be safe wherever you are. In Jesus' name, see you ladies the next time.